Specific point for you. In your manifesto, you said you were going to roll back state surveillance powers by ending the indiscriminate bulk collection of communications data. Now, that was before Manchester. Do you still stand by that as the right thing to do? Yeah, if you look at the security services, what do they need? Do they need more powers or do they need to make use or be given the resources to make use of the powers they already have? The temporary exclusion orders, which exist now, only one has been used in the last two years. But undoubtedly, the shadow that we are standing in now is that of Manchester. And Manchester is my capital city. It matters to me. As Jeremy said, I was there the night afterwards. All four of my kids knew people who were in Manchester that night. And it just reminds you of how safe our police and our security services keep us. The countless times that those kinds of outrages had been prevented. So to answer the question, <coughs> how do you deal with it? How do you tackle that terrorism? Well, we will give an additional £300 million to police to make sure that we deal with the community policing that is so necessary. We will also ensure that we restart engagement with communities where terrorism can be fostered so you get on the inside to prevent it and nip it in the bud. But there is undoubtedly an international angle to this too. And here's the thing. The terrorists that hate Britain, do you know what? They help hate Belgium. They hate France. They hate Germany. They hate our way of life. They hate everything that we stand for. And just as we in Manchester stood together against terrorism, and across Britain we stand together against terrorism, so we must stand together with our neighbours, not just in this continent, around the world, with shared values to fight it. And that will mean diplomacy. That will mean all sorts of things, but sometimes it will take real, serious action. Thank Sometimes you. it might even mean military action. You have to do the tough thing to defeat the terrorists. Paul okay. Nuttall. Well, it's, it's quite clear that the war in Iraq and the bombing of Libya was fundamentally wrong, because all we were doing is we were removing, yes, evil dictators, but it was quite clear that what was going to come next was going to be even worse. But that isn't... Our foreign policy isn't an excuse for what went on in Manchester. And what politicians need to do is at least have the courage to name what it is. It's Islamist oh. extremism. Oh. Uh, sorry. OK? Oh. It's oh. Islamist oh. extremism. Oh. But nobody oh. seems... Let, let him have Tim, his. Tim, Tim, you've just had a diatribe, so, not, you know, let's... Can you have your... Let's, let's carry on. It's your but, turn for diatribe. It's Islamist extremism. Nobody seems to have the courage to say what it is. How we solve it? Well, we put 20,000 police officers back on the beat, 4,000 more on the border force. We tighten our borders. 7,000 new prison officers because radicalisation is rife with in our prisons. And I must say, I can't believe that we've allowed 350 jihadis to return to our country from Libya and Syria. And I'm sorry, if you go out and fight or support Islamic State, you should have your passport revoked and you should never be allowed back into this country. <laughs> now, now, what we've also got to do is look at radicalisation within our own mosques. And I will say, Amber, I think you need to look at Saudi and Qatari funding of mosques in this country. And finally, we need to get the Muslim community itself to sign up to the PREVENT programme. Only one out of eight referrals to PREVENT come from within the Muslim community. We have to, you know that the we have to rebuild last trust Monday, and confidence you know, Paul, in PREVENT. You know, Paul, that the murder last Monday was reported five separate okay, occasions by the Muslim community. Caroline they want Lucas our safety as much as anybody else. Caroline Lucas. Well, thank you to David for the, for the question, and it's an incredibly important question. And let me be very clear to begin with that people who commit the kind of atrocities like the one in Manchester are barbaric, and what they stand for is evil. But the best form of defence against attacks like that is intelligence-led policing and community engagement. Mm -hmm. And the kind of response we've just heard from Paul, which seems to suggest that the violence in Manchester was somehow representative of Islam, I think is completely Outrageous. There is no Islamism. more representative of Islam than the murderer of Joe Cox was, was representative of the wider British public. So listen, I'm deeply concerned about the police cuts we've already talked about, and it's interesting that the Police Federation warned that those police cuts could be very dangerous. But I also think it's right that we review our interventions overseas. I think it's a, a disservice to democracy to pretend there's no link and to close down the debate. The former head of MI5 herself has said that the invasion of Iraq exacerbated the terror threat to the UK and was, in her words, highly significant in terms of homegrown extremists. Mm -hmm. But what I want to say actually is something to, to Amber, because we can't solve all the world's problems, but we can at least stop adding to them. Mm -hmm. And my question is this, really, that why is Britain the second biggest arms dealer in the world? Why are we selling... <laughs> 
to 22 of the 30 countries on the government's own human rights watch list? Why did we make 10 times more in arms sales to Saudi Arabia than we gave to Yemen in okay. aid? Amber I don't know how that. you got me. It's very nice. I will figures. make no apology for being a government that wants to defend this country. We will make sure that our defence budget is well funded. We will do With that by having a strong economy. You sell an arms to Saudi Arabia. We will have to make sure that we can do that by having a strong industry. Wait, the, the, arms sales to Saudi Arabia cannot no. be justified on the grounds of this being good for industry. No, this is Saudi, absolutely Saudi, Saudi to many, many. Saudi Saudi has, Saudi has the right. Saudi. Leanne Wood. There does need to be some reviewing going on. We need to look at foreign policy. We need to look at the prevent strategy. It is a fact that policing has been cut by 20%, including when Theresa May was in the Home Office, and it's a question of priorities. We should be investing in police and other public services. Those are the people uh, running into the dangerous situation when everyone else is and, and, running and that away. And has been repeatedly made. When you say we should look at what, what we're doing, what else would you, what would you do differently in terms of tackling extremism? Well, I think in terms of the cuts to public services, that's had a, a, an impact. If you just take one small example, youth work. When you had a well-funded youth service, there were youth workers available to challenge the ideology of young people if Are it was going in the wrong. Are you saying austerity has made us less safe? I'm saying austerity has cut youth workers and there are fewer people around to challenge the root cause, the ideology that uh, spurs these people on. I, I used to work as a probation officer. Can I just finish making this point? I used to work as a probation officer. If we are interested in tackling the root cause of this problem, we have to understand what it is, we have to understand those ideo ideological drivers and they have to be challenged by people qualified to be able to do that. And by cutting youth workers and other public services, then you are reducing your ability to do that. And that is one of the reasons we are less safe. We have safe. a small amount of time so left. Can you be brief, Tim Powell? There's a, an awful lot of truth in it. I think the thing we need to remember particularly when everything is so raw just nine days after Manchester, that there's a lot of finger-pointing going on. We all have ideas, and there's some of them different, some of them similar. The critical thing we should remember at this point is that knee-jerk new policies and new laws tend to do more harm than good. More resources for the security services and the police we have already will do a lot more good okay. than harm. Thank and you. our I, best I, I, response sorry, I said you to needed terrorists to be brief, is the defiance Nussle? of keeping on. I mean, I, I mean, of course. I mean, the vast majority of, of Muslims in this country are peaceful, they add to our economy, they're great for our culture, but there is a tiny minority, a tiny minority within that community who hate who we are, hate the way we live, hate our democracy, and I've called it a cancer in the past. Radical Islam is a cancer and it needs to be cut out. If not, there'll be more attacks on And like you, haven't ruled out, you haven't ruled out locking up suspected terrorists... Sorry. You haven't ruled out locking up suspected terrorists without trial. Would that really make us safer? Well, frankly, um, I've said nothing should be taken off the table. As far as I'm concerned, you know, when MI5 tell us that there's a possible 23,000 jihadis out there they hate, who they want hate to do us harm, freedom. I'm sorry they hate our freedom that and I was liberty. always... Let me Let's finish. Let's not give I away our freedom. I was always briefly, fought Angus Robertson British lives over the human rights of any jihadi I, any day. Thank I, you I remember much. the question was about terrorism and extremism, and you noticed that UKIP went straight for Muslims. Yeah. We remember <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. It's my time to speak. It's not my time to speak. It wasn't. It wasn't a Muslim who shot Joe Cox, no. one of Jeremy's uh, Labour MP colleagues. It was a British right-wing neo-Nazi 